Guys, welcome to the world premiere and the ultimate guide to the new and all-electric 2022 Ford F-150 Lightning. That's right, and after this video, at the very end, we're going to give you the pricing and it's going to blow your mind. Yes, so let's go over all the specifications because we basically have the whole enchilada here. Yeah, Ford gave us pretty much everything in terms of information from power, pricing, towing, you name it, we've got it. So, and I talked to the engineering team, I was very fortunate, I got a few details. And uh, let's start with the chassis, shall we? Yes. So basically, this is a crew cab short bed. So think of a current F-150, mm -hmm. right? With a big crew cab four door configuration and a five and a half foot bed and about 145 inch wheelbase. Those specs are basically identical. Which is unusual because what's underneath is not identical. Yes, underneath is actually a unique chassis. I actually asked their engineering team, did you just reuse the same frame and just stick some batteries in it? They said no. Uh, because they had to modify the frame, first of all, to hold the batteries. Right. And it's kind of a skateboard orientation, right? As right. we've seen from other manufacturers. Uh, but it's basically a skateboard with two different batteries that can be placed in the center of the skateboard and between the frame rails. And then all of them are going to be four-wheel drive. That's right. They're going to be four-wheel drive. But what's really crazy is that they also are all going to be four-wheel independent suspension. Yes, that's also a very unique part of this truck. Right. And there's going to be basically a motor in the front and the motor in the rear. And they say, Ford says that the motors are almost identical, um, but they have different final gearing. And obviously, there's no transmission to speak of. Right, it's a direct drive, uh, you know, yeah. electric setup. I interrupt this video for this week's TFL Bids Bargain. As you know, we have many cool trucks and off-road SUVs for sale, but this time, it's a movie star. We're selling our very own 2004 Ford F-150 four-wheel drive. This truck appeared in our popular to hell and back, no payment needed series. It's been updated with a few parts. It has a suspension lift, brand new tires. It has a 4.6 liter V8. All the details are at tflbits.com. Use the link below, check it out. And don't forget, use the submit link to actually sell your own truck or off-road SUV on our site and have it go to a like-minded enthusiast. But the, the power on, in this vehicle is incredible. As a matter of fact, for those of you who are upset about the Ford Lightning name being used because it used to be a performance Ford truck, this thing will totally outperform it, at least with zero to 60. Yeah, and um, the Ford says mid four second range. And of course, President Biden already drove a prototype. Yeah, actually, there's a lot of video out there of the president driving the prototype and actually saying that it's pretty quick. And, you know, I, I, I would believe him you know, on that one. Uh, maybe we should hire him. He can do our testing for us. <laughs> Something tells me that it won't go over well. I don't no. think we can afford him. But let's talk about what this vehicle actually is in terms of performance. I know a lot of you guys are wondering about how much power it produces, what the torque is, also what it can tow and what it can haul. Exactly, because it's a truck. Yes. You know, it needs to be a truck. Um, and so here's the power specification. Let's go over that. Uh, because it has two different battery configurations, there is a standard range battery with a total range of 230 miles. Mm -hmm. Okay. And there's also an extended range battery, a different battery that you can also equip this Lightning with uh, for a total of 300 miles of total range. And the power outputs are different. So the standard battery, the smaller battery size, will have a total horsepower output of 426. Now, by the way, this says targeted, so they're aiming for this. It might be a little more, it might be a little less. Yes. All right, continue. And the maximum extended range power is 563. So, I mean, we're talking, you know, past, way past the Raptor uh, territory <laughs> here. Yeah, we are. Yeah, and we don't have an exact uh, weight specification as far as curb weight of this vehicle. But if you think, you know, 563 horsepower, also 775 pound-feet of torque, Jeez. and mid four-second range acceleration, this Lightning could be as quick as the current TRX. Yeah, and uh, what's interesting is we do have sort of a basis of comparison because there's another pickup truck that's all electric that we've been hearing about, and that's, of course, the GMC Hummer. That one recently came in with a curb weight of around 9,000 pounds. Ooh, doggies. Yeah, now we do not know what this one will be. I suspect it won't be 9,000 pounds. No. But um, let's talk about towing and let's talk about payload. Yeah, you're probably wondering, 
Okay, so they got rid of the solid rear axle, mm -hmm. so this thing will not hold weight, it will not tow. Well, that's not the case because Ford is thinking about those things, obviously. Right. And they're also saying, of course, we haven't driven it yet, but they're saying the independent suspension is very comfortable, um, and it's also uh, pretty confident. Uh, maximum payload is going to be at 2,000 pounds. Okay. That's and that's for the smaller battery. Yeah. Okay. And the larger battery will have a payload number of 1,800 and also up to 10,000 pounds of towing. Now, that is pretty impressive. That puts it right in the heat of battle with other naturally aspirated or regular, I should say, uh, half-ton pickup trucks. But there's a big question out there I know you guys are asking, and that is, well, what about range when you're towing? And there are some interesting caveats to that. Yes, and of course... <laughs> We all know uh, range, be it gas, diesel, electric, anything, your range will go down when towing. Right. Ford did not specify an estimate of how much range you're losing because they don't know what trailer you have or where you're driving, right? But the truck does, and yeah. that's the cool thing. So the truck has, well, tell them about the scale. It's so yeah. cool. Yeah, the new onboard scale feature where actually the truck is able to estimate its own and weight and the payload inside of it, and right. also how much the hitch weighs. Right. right, and then you tell the vehicle what you're towing, basically, in terms of that weight, correct? Yeah, and also tell it the profile. Is it a boat? Is it a camper? Is it a, some sort of utility trailer? Right. So it, it's able to calculate kind of the aerodynamics of it a little bit, and also the weight. And, and drag it, and all that, too. And then the gauges, it will show you exactly, or a very precise estimate of your range when towing based on the route that you're going on. So this is the cool part, and this is what I've always been wondering. If you're going over the Ike Gauntlet, which we do all the time, I should say he does all the time, um, we suck up a ton of fuel going up and over. We've done it with an electric vehicle as well. And so this will actually take that route and it'll say, okay, we know you're gonna suck up a ton of energy going up and over this. This is what your range is going to be. Whereas if you were on a flat highway and going the same, you know, distance speed and everything else, obviously it would be very different. It can figure that out based on navigation, what the weight is of the trailer, how much you're towing, aerodynamics, you name it, it figures it out. And I really like that because so far we haven't had that. Exactly. Uh, so that would be nice. And of course, we'll talk about charging coming up really quickly. But yeah. I want to mention some of the other competitors coming up, right? Oh, yeah. There's the Rivian truck that's supposed to be available on sale in within a month or two. Yeah, um, we, if we see it. <laughs> right. Then there is also, of course, the Tesla Cybertruck that's supposed to be out maybe by the end of the year, maybe early next I'm gonna year. I'm going to bet some Bitcoin on that one. Uh, <laughs> so, and those trucks are actually um, going to be coming out with a high-performance variant mm -hmm. um, and not very cheaply, right? And no. also blistering performance like in 2.9 to 3 second range, right? Right. So this lightning is not that. You know, they're quoting mid-four seconds acceleration. It's just still ridiculous. Yeah, um, but you just have to, uh, and that's where the pricing comes in. And yeah. then just in a couple of minutes, we'll mention the price. Once again, at the end of this video. You yeah. won't, be, you will, I couldn't believe it. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Uh, um, so, 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 yeah. Let's continue, though. Let's talk about the power and also the fact that this vehicle can be a power source like the current hybrid and then some in terms of being able to plug it in to other places and use the battery to power just about anything. Yeah, so you guys know F-150 Hybrid is out, and the Hybrid currently offers 7.2 kilowatt, that's the maximum inverter generator output, right? Right. That's a lot of power already. Yeah, sure, we've done a lot with it. Yeah, 7.2, you can charge another electric car <laughs> with it, you can charge your tools, anything you want. You can even weld, certain welders will be supported. Yeah, you can sit on a campsite for like um, 36 uh, hours, hours. And, and, and charge the thing on a full, and it's pretty impressive. So this one will have that and more. Mm -hmm. uh, 9.6 is the total kilowatt uh, output export power. And that's because it also has a frunk. Ah, yeah, that's right. So uh, it doesn't need an engine, right? There's no gas engine in the front. There's no engine whatsoever in the front. As such, there's all this extra storage capacity that it can have in the front. So they did it a unique take on the front trunk or frunk. Yes, and it opens kind of, think about the grill area, right? It actually opens up to reveal a fairly cavernous space. So you're saying the grill and the hood are one piece and yes. they come up like a clamshell. Exactly, and um, in that space, there's a power 2.4 kilowatt output maximum. Mm -hmm. And then in the bed, similar to the hybrid, the current truck, um, they're going to have up to 7.2 kilowatt hours 
uh, I'm sorry, kilowatt output. So you can potentially, and they're independent. Right. So if you're running something out of the front, you can run something, something out of the back too at the same yeah, time. Yeah, exactly. So, and of course, the truck is going to be monitoring its state of charge. And if it gets below a certain point, it will give you a warning. Um, either on your app, the Ford Pass app, or maybe even an audible warning inside the cab. I thought it was an inflatable Jim Farley would come out and yell at you and say, hey, stop, 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 no. So so that's all available. And the, tr- the frunk, I should say, have about 14 cubic feet of volume, mm-hmm. which is similar to uh, like a standard sedan, right? So it's pretty pretty good space. Um, and also it can be washable. You know, you can put dirty things in there or store groceries. So pretty useful space. And of course, other competitors have similar solutions. Yeah, they do. What's interesting about Ford is that if you look at it, um, actually at the picture, you can see that's not a grill. That's actually one piece. They just kind of make it look a little bit like a truck grill, but uh, it's pretty obvious that it's not. Yeah, so we must talk about charging, right? Because that's where it's at. Big time. Um, because um, you know you don't want to wait a long time for charging. So Ford has provided three level two solutions. Of course, level one solution is there, uh, regular like 120 volt. One, one to 120, yeah, yeah. your house. Uh, uh, level two is 240, mm-hmm. uh, approximately a uh, 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 voltage. And then level three. So the maximum level three uh, charging capability is 150 kilowatts, mm-hmm. uh, which is similar to the Mach-E, the current Mustang Mach-E, uh, but it's not best in class. I mean, it's not best to some of the other vehicles. You were like like Tesla there. and Rivian or And Porsche yeah. and some others. Yeah, but at the same time, remember, this is sort of the everyman thing. And I believe they do provide a standard in-home charger that comes with the truck. Yeah, you can buy different solutions. There is also something called the Pro Backup Power, which is actually a mount, a thing you mount in your house, in your garage or on, top, on the side of your house. And you can charge the truck. But that particular unit, which is optional, uh-huh. um, can actually... Um, intelligently and seamlessly, if the power is cut to your home from the grid, the truck will send power back to your home. So it's a, really a backup generator. It's like a backup generator that you can just use and it'll just fire right up. It is actually a lot of this is some really good tech. Now, if you want to talk about speed, uh, it's relatively quick to get you some decent mileage. Am I correct? Yes. Yeah, so in 10 minutes on the fast charge, this is the fastest. In 10 minutes, you can gain about 41 miles on the standard battery or 54 miles on an extended range. This uh-huh. is according to Ford. Um, and of course, those times um, or mileages come down. If you're charging um, on the DC charging, you can go to, uh, this is the fastest, from 15% to 80% in about 44 minutes. Okay. So think about lunch, right? Having lunch. So you can go somewhere. If you need a, a decent amount of charge, you can have plug, a, it in. Yeah, plug it in, have some lunch, and then keep going. 45-minute lunch? What luxury is that? Come on, this is TFL. We only get like 10 minutes or else Roman throws things. Throw <laughs> but here's the thing about uh, that charging. Um, other companies like Rivian have been quoted as in saying that they can get uh, 200 miles in 30 minutes using a 160-kilowatt uh, charger. Now, s- that has not been confirmed officially. So this is only based on what they've said. We haven't seen the actual product. Um, so we'll find out in the near future about that. So once again, I mean, this is not like the state of the art mm-hmm. um, as far as speeds are concerned, but still very usable by today's standards. I, 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 I'm actually uh, fine with those numbers personally. Uh, yeah, so so there, there you have it. Now we have to touch on the interior really quick yeah. and the trim levels. There will be four trim levels. There's going to be the commercial grade, something they're calling the commercial truck for lightning. That'd be like an entry-level model? Yes, very okay. base. And then there's an XLT, mm-hmm. Lariat, and Platinum. And do you want to tell them the starting price on the commercial grade? Okay, so what I've got here is a starting price for the commercial-oriented entry model. That's what they call it. $39,974. That's the MSRP. That's standard with four-wheel drive. And that's before you get the returns from the government uh, for both state and federal. Um, th- that price is mind-blowing. Absolutely was not expecting that. That is so much lower than the competition, considering what you're getting as a standard vehicle. Now, uh, the XLT in the next model starts at $52,974. So a major jump, but still a relatively affordable price. Yeah, and of course, they'll have kind of unique interiors, right? Right. Technology included. 
Um, then they don't quote specific Lariat and Platinum models. No, they don't. I, I'm pricing. looking now. Yeah, they don't have But I, I asked them specifically, and yeah. they said the most optioned F-150 Lightning may be around the $90,000 range. This is the Platinum with the fastest charging capabilities, the longest range, all the you know massaging seats, the rest of it. So between, say, seven and $10,000 more than the equivalent F-150 Platinum with the EcoBoost, yes. that's roughly what I'm thinking, right? Yeah. So, uh, but but I mean, you gotta th- think about this. So, uh, batteries are expensive, yes. right? So the fact that they were able to get the entry price below forty thousand, uh, that's really special. And I asked them, oh, that's coming like four years from now, right? And they said no. They said all four grades. So the commercial grade. Uh, by the way, we don't have a lot of images of the commercial grade. No, we don't. Um, uh, that's coming actually later, maybe next week. Uh, the XLT, the Lariat, and the Platinum, all four grades are going to be uh, orderable in the spring of 2022. That's when production starts. Uh-huh. And they're going to be on sale at the same time. So they're not going to do the thing where some other manufacturers do. You you buy the most expensive now and wait. And, and then wait to get the, the one that yeah. you can actually afford, which I can't stand it, but everybody does it. So Ford is actually playing the game, I think, the right way. Now, there's a lot of tech that you can get with the vehicle, but there's a lot of options. For instance, the Ford uh, Copilot 360. And with that, you can get the Blue Cruise, which is kind of like a Super Cruise that GM uses. So it's a semi-autonomous system. Mm-hmm. It's available. Yeah, and, and also what's available is the 15 and a half inch that center screen yeah. on upper trim levels is available. That's the same as in the Mach E. Yeah. So, but of course, it's going to have truck stuff, you know, a little bit more trucky. Uh, it's going to have, you know, obviously the brake controller is included, the integrated one if mm-hmm. you're towing, if you're equipping your truck to tow. Um, it'll have backup assist system uh, for trailers. It's also going to have a smart hitch, which is a new feature we haven't tried yet. Yes. Which is when you back up, you can kind of hit smart hitch, and the truck will try to align the hitch for you. Uh, That's just yeah. so cool. <laughs> well, of course, all, all of us truck guys say we don't need that. Right. Now, there's something important to remember that this is considered a 4x4, four four, but we don't know exactly how it's going to perform off-road. I have a feeling it's going to be pretty impressive with all that torque, but you, there's no gearing to talk about. There's no transfer case to talk about. This is all based on the torque coming from the two electric motors. So it's going to be interesting to see what it can do off-road, and we will indeed test it. Yes, but we have a couple of specs. Yes. So ground clearance on this truck is 8.9 inches, which is about half an inch lower than the standard four-wheel drive F-150. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm not sure why, but that's what the spec is. Um, approach angle 25.4, departure 24.2, uh, breakover is 17.8. And they did say that the battery structure is in a composite shell and also skid plated. Uh, with additional skid plates. So that's very important. Well, considering what we do to these things off-road, yes. Yeah, and that's very important for batteries, of course. And also e-locker in the back. Really? E-locker is going to be available, but only in the rear, they said. There's no front locker. So how does it lock? Okay, well, I'll have to figure that out later. I have no well, idea how it works. Well, you know, I'm sure the, the little gearbox that's attached to the electric motor in the back Mm -hmm. probably will have an ability to kind of set equal power both sides. So the point is here, though, that this setup will be very interesting off-road with that much torque. Yeah, and of course, we uh, need to drive it. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So there you have it. Pretty attractive price. Incredible price. Fairly good specs. A standard kind of a familiar style, Mm -hmm. right? It doesn't look like a wedge. Yeah, it's, it looks like a Ford F-150. Yeah, exactly, and it's about the same size. Um, and also very, very strong performance, at least on the pa- on paper. On paper it is. I wanted to throw in one more thing, Andre. There are a lot of people out there who are really iffy about switching to electric power, or they might have to. Well, here's what Ford's doing, and I think it's really impressive. Right now, with this new truck, they have an all-electric truck. They have a hybrid truck. They have like five different trucks that run with different engines. Know, different engines, so including a diesel. And, you know, you have this huge thing. So you have even a V8 Coyote, which is still being produced, from V8 all the way over to electric. So what they're doing is they're absolutely swarming the industry. Ford will have a truck that covers every single bracket that's out there with the introduction of this new Lightning. And I think that is exciting, which means there's just more choice out there. There's no reason to be forced into something, right? Absolutely, I would agree. And also, I just wanted to also mention that they're not going to be first to market. No. You know, that was going to be important, of course. But GMC, Hummer, and Rivian are probably going to beat them. Maybe even the Tesla might beat them. 
but they're gonna be so, a lot more expensive so yeah but those trucks will be a lot more expensive of course so and we'll have to wait and see how it actually plays out and how many they can build in michigan in michigan that's right yes. but they have a new high-tech plant where they're uh, going to be building them which is near where the uh, F-150s are built. At the Rouge uh, facility. Right, but it's a new section. Yeah, it's a new building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and they're trying to do zero um, waste and all that other type of stuff, which is great. So very good stuff from Ford, guys. And as always, all this information is also at tfltruck.com, so check it out. See you next time.